Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is January 6th, Friday evening. I went ahead and tested the single-use chips from China and they were a total failure. None of them were recognized as a viable chip. So, I'm going to contact the company, ask them what the, their policy is. I really don't want to deal with sending this back to China for a measly $27, which is what they cost. So, here's what's happening. When the P800 originally came out, some of those printers had the original firmware installed in them. And the so-called resettable chip, refillable carts that were created for them only work with those particular printers. Epson immediately upgraded the firmware to negate the ability for users to use these refillable carts. So it might be a case where my particular firmware is beyond the number or date that these chips would have been designed for. And it's really sad because this appeared to be something new, but it's not working. And I then now I realize that possibly those carts that are coming in the next few days also will not work. But you know, what the heck, let's go ahead and test them anyway. All right, so I have been reading a lot of new comments on some of the forums and all sorts of different problems and people are jumping into conclusions prematurely without really doing the proper amount of troubleshooting in the correct order. In the military, they used to always say that, always look for the simplest answer to a problem. And often that's the case with printers. And I'll just discuss a few little um, items here or uh, subjects. A person wrote in and complained that their venerable R3000 is going to be trash. And I'm gonna go ahead and order a P600, which is basically the same printer with a different chassis, a different look on the outside. But the mechanicals are pretty much identical to the R3000. What's the problem? The problem is paper feed problems. He originally was having just a couple of occasional problems using the front feeder on the R3000. If you don't know what I'm talking about, refer to my R3000 videos where I actually demonstrate the front feed function. There's also a rear feeding function for your roller type paper. So you load up the little roller assembly, 13 inch wide, two inch core paper is extremely difficult to find folks. So I don't even know why these little 13 inch printers offer that. It's nearly impossible to find 13 inch wide paper in two inch core uh, rolls. But at any rate, the rear feeding is basically the same as with any other Epson. You insert it, make sure that the front edge is parallel to the sides. It has to be exact. And when you feed it, you just feed, feed, feed until you feel, feel a little tension building up. And at that point, it trips a little sensor. And then the roller mechanism will transport the paper a little bit forward. It will align it back and forth and give you the OK. The P800, the same way. I just recently loaded a roll of 17 inch uh, Aurora white from Red River and it took two or three tries to get it to uh, be accepted. The reason I was feeding it slightly skewed and it will detect that it has to be perfect. So later on he started having just, just continual problems loading paper whether it was from the top feeder, the front feeder or the rear feeder. And he's getting ready to just toss the printer away. When in reality, what he should have done, and he said the magic word, the magic hint, he had been printing on nothing but fine art papers. And fine art papers are not these uh, cheaper plastic papers like this. This is resin coated paper. When you cut it, it produces no dust whatsoever. And these other types of paper that are fiber based, that are, um, what do they call it, rag, and all sorts of other 
types of paper bases, they produce a lot of dust. They recommend that you brush the dust off the surface before you even insert it on your printer or you're going to then print over loose dust which then is going to fall off and give you all kinds of beautiful little white specks all over your print. And that, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten dollar sheet of paper will be trashed. So what happens is that the rollers being made of a relatively sticky rubber begin to accumulate dust. And it gets to the point where there's so much dust on them and you really can't see that, it's internally, that it no longer can graph paper like it did when it was brand new. What do these people do? They never ever clean their rollers. They didn't think that was necessary, but it is entirely necessary. That's one of the functions that you need to do every couple of months, depending on the type of paper that you feed. If you just feed plastic paper, RC paper, you don't have to do it so often, but every once in a while when you're feeding, even just your standard regular copy paper has dust. But all of those fine art papers definitely do, and they will definitely trash your rollers after a few months of continual use. So what, what to do? You take a sheet of paper, you fold it in half, like so. Just to give you an idea of what the upper half and the lower half will be. You then wet the bottom half with isopropyl alcohol. You stick it on the rear, the top feeder, and you press the feed button. The paper will advance through, and it will pick up dust and junk that's accumulated in your rollers, and the dry side will dry the rollers. You just repeat that five, six, seven times, and then test the printer once more. And you will be shocked how well the transport mechanism works all of a sudden. I had an art. 2400 that was horrendous it would reject half the papers that I used to load from the top it would just shoot them out the front and I solved that by performing the simple little action now Canon printers have a roller cleaning uh, utility built into the maintenance tab and you just follow the instruction it does quite a good job so no need to throw that printer away because it was misfeeding paper um, but it's too late he went ahead and bought the printer so too bad. Colors are suddenly off. Well, what causes color to be off when it used to be perfect? And let's just use something that we know as a standard. An image of nothing but solid gray and it's neutral. It is say 127, 127, 127 in your RGB readings in your Photoshop uh, file. You send that through and it comes out perfectly gray. But then all of a sudden, maybe tomorrow, it no longer shows up as neutral gray, but it begins to have a, a, uh, a bias toward some other color. Well, the reason is very simple. Nothing, it's not rocket science. <clears throat> you, have MC, you have CMYK feeding your printer. One of those colors is not being fed sufficiently. And so now your balance is off. So you need to find out which color is not being fed or laid on the paper in the same amount as it was before when you were able to print that gray image perfectly neutral. So what do you do? You got to run a nozzle check. You run the nozzle check and half the time you will notice one of those colors, whether it's the light version of cyan or magenta or yellow it's lacking some of the nozzles. So why did that occur? Maybe you didn't use your printer for a while. Maybe your refilling technique is not as good as you thought if you are refilling. But if you're using OEM cartridges, you may have let the printer sit for you know far too long. And now the um, balance is off because you are actually feeding less ink. You have nozzles that may be clogged and you need to unclog them by running a cleaning cycle. And that's what the cleaning cycle utility is for. It's for you to repair what you did to your printer by not using it. So do that first before you begin to um, imagine all sorts of horrible uh, things that may be happening to your printer. Usually it's actually very simple and you will usually solve that. Another reason that that can happen is, well, you may have updated something, okay? 
in the realm of printers, they are run by drivers and those drivers have to match the operating system you're using. And so usually that's, you know, that could be another reason for that to happen. Macintosh will have, will, uh, has problems with driver compatibility. Um, the newer uh, Windows versions of their operating system, the same thing. So you have to make sure that you have the correct driver. If you, up, if you updated your uh, operating system, download the latest driver and make sure that it matches that particular um, operating system. You may have to delete the driver completely and reinstall the new one. And usually that is solved, assuming that there's nothing actually mechanically wrong or that you don't have something as simple as your cyan channel, 20% of the nozzles are not firing. That will cause a definite change in color balance. And that is included in the, it worked yesterday uh, mentality. Horrible noises all of a sudden. You hear these grinding noises. You turn on the printer in the morning and all of a sudden you have this panic attack because your printer is making grinding noises. Well, before the printer can actually be certified as usable, when you turn it on, you power it on, if you are the type that turns the printer off, it has to perform some passes, some lateral passes across the entire range of travel. That is the, the head assembly. And so often what happens is you got a little piece of paper or something broke off and it's stuck somewhere and it's causing those gears that operate that particular um, operation to skip. And it's basically a, like a cog over, you know, over another uh, cog and one of them cannot move. And so that one will just da -da 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 -da, like a machine gun and scares the crap out of you. But that's all it is. Get a little flashlight, look everywhere inside that printer and possibly find what could be causing the obstruction. Often a higher end printer will actually tell you that there's an internal obstruction and that's what you need to look for. If you cannot find anything and it continues to do that, unfortunately, then you have to take it to a repair center. But usually it's caused by something, something dropped inside. You had the top lid open. That's why it's a good idea to not open the top lid. Something could possibly fall in a staple, a paper clip, anything could happen and cause this huge, seemingly huge problem. Okay. Canon OEM cards are filled, but they are leaking all over, all over the inside of my printer. Well, think of it in this manner. If you take a straw, drinking straw, and fill it up with water, and you plug the top, you can literally lift it off the glass, and the water will not, for, or the Coke, or whatever the drink you're drinking, will not pour out. The moment you remove your finger from the other end of the straw, all of the fluid comes out. Carts are the same way. They are hydrostatically balanced so that only ink comes out of it when there's a demand created by the printer through the printhead. And uh, we're not going to get into pressurized tanks, but I'm talking about just simple Canon printers like the Pro 100, for instance. And a lot of you are what? They're refilling their original carts, which is the way to go if you want to go the third party route. You don't want to use compatible carts on a Canon. That's, that's inferior. And you're taking a chance with your print hit due to ink starvation and other problems that occur quite often with this, these uh, less quality uh, cartridges. So you use your OEM carts and you modify them by removing the factory fill hole. Then you drill it out 5 30 seconds of an inch to remove the lower seat that actually held that little ball in place. And now you insert the plug. Well, that plug may not be sealing. You may have actually created a hole that's a little bit too large for that plug. And you could conceivably have a situation just like that straw where you remove your finger and the ink is literally just pouring out on your printhead assembly, the inner side of the printhead on the cannon, which is like a well. Another reason could be that the bottom seal or the bottom exit port on a Canon cart is not necessarily sealing well against the corresponding port on the printhead. And unlike Epson printers that have an actual 
um, spigot that enters an, a, an, o, an o ring on your cart, Canon cars just sit by contact, okay? Especially those that do not utilize stationary carts like the Pro One and higher up. The ones that use carts that ride on the printhead, they actually rely on just passive contact. Sure, you click it on, and that's supposed to provide enough contact so that those, those silicone gaskets seal. If there's a break anywhere on that seal or on your fill plug, you will have a leak throughout your internal section of your printhead assembly. And it's not horrible. You just have to remove the printhead and clean it as well as you can. So those are all a bunch of little silly, seemingly silly things that occur. But I see it being asked about or being brought up quite often on these forums. And um, they are easily um, prevented. And if they do occur, they're easily diagnosed and nothing to worry about. It's nothing huge. You just have to kind of keep an eye on these little problems. They're rather common and they scare a lot of newcomers to printing. Okay, so that is it for this video. I'm going to be discussing a couple of more subjects in a pair of videos that I'm going to be recording either tonight or tomorrow. And they're along the same line. Um, of image print quality and what the reasons are okay for these problems so thank you once again please subscribe share and like until the next time happy printing everybody bye bye